Hi Alan, how are you? Great to see you today. Very pleased to be here. So before we start talking about Learning to Learn, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your history with Stephanie and then the program. The first 30 years of my life, I um, virtually didn't read. I read at 52 words a minute um, with less than 50% comprehension, uh, which is way below the literacy line. Um, I, in 82, met Dr. Paul Dennison, who introduced me to some techniques around changing the eyes and exercises that improved me nearly 100%. And then a few years later, um, I met Stephanie. And uh, in a weekend, I went from about 110 words a minute with 50 or 60% comprehension, which is still below the literacy level. Um, I went to 1,200 words a minute with 90% comprehension between the Friday night and the Saturday. Wow. Um, and I can only say that just transforms life, really. So obviously you've participated in Learning to Learn. So what's your most vivid memory you have when you attended the program? It, there's a whole lot of complexity, but the, the really simple bit was that I got an insight into how I learnt and how I processed information and left valuing that and understanding it in a way that I could use it every day in all sorts of places. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I already I had a fairly good memory, um, but it enhanced my memory because I could understand how to enhance it. Um, Mostly my concentration. You know, people get caught up in the speed, but my concentration was so enhanced. And um, prior to learning to learn, even when I was working at trying to read something, my brain had to hold focus on it for sometimes, you know, 10 or 15 seconds, and then I'd be off somewhere else and not notice that I was off somewhere else. Um, whereas, you know, I could hold. In that weekend, I could hold concentration on the printing and reading process or the whatever the process was. I could hold concentration for 10 times longer than I'd ever held before. And it was just simply... In the past, people had taught me about why the distraction occurred and Steph showed me how to hold the focus and how to hold the concentration. So it was about focusing what was there and building on what was there rather than focusing on what I couldn't do, which I'd successfully done for 30 years. So we talk a lot about this learning to learn as a program, um, but what is it about Stephanie's teaching that makes her so unique? She has an amazing capacity to consider extraordinary numbers of complexity before she works out what the simple strategy or approach is that embellishes the complexity but makes it extremely easy for the learner to embrace that simple option or approach that's dense in its thinking and always includes multiple aspects. Um, but it's, it's obvious you're involved in a very complex process, but it always feels simple. I think would be the primary thing that would distinguish how she operates. Um, and she has, a, she has a capacity to present something at one level and you can watch that she'll pop in for a minute to another place and to another and you're just aware that she's accommodating differences. Um, and just the fact that she's accommodating those differences at some level makes you aware that somebody else is processing in a way that you're not. Yet. So my understanding is that you promoted this program back in 2010. So what are your motivations or what were your motivations for bringing it back out into the public then? It's deeply personal. Um, I can't tell you what happens in the nervous system of a human being who can't read. Who in the space of 50 hours is reading 1200 words a minute. You just can't imagine what happens. Um, 
and having had a therapeutic background and work with people you know, in the learning process in a different way myself, I know the associated discomfort for people who have struggles with the learning process and how much the world rewards us if we do it well. You know, it's hard to be successful in this world without having good memory, without having great concentration, without being able to read and comprehend things well. Um, and for me to be able to go from, you know, 50 words a minute, which no matter what, what, how you say it, it's a, it's a limiting factor in what I can do and achieve, to, you know, reading the pace that I do and, and can and the comprehension that I can, um, the exhilaration that that produces, the excitement of what's possible, and forget that it's me in any human being. Um, you know, the, the simple impact, if, if, if somebody doubles their speed and maintains their concentration level, They'd save five or six hours every week. How many people would like to have an extra five or six hours up their sleeve every week? Um, you know, how many times do people go back and waste time revisiting stuff because they actually just can't re retrieve the information? And to have that not be not be taking place is such a time saver. At a really practical level. And the other thing I'd say is, is we talk about how much information is available on the internet, and at one level it is, but it's not. It's only as available as quickly as you can read it. So it doesn't matter how much is there, actually makes no difference to the individual until they can get access to it, and understand it, and comprehend it better, study better, quicker, easier.